Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Nunez Nunchi podcast, where I do deep dives, reactions to our favorite K-dramas from a mental health perspective and more with special guests like Catherine Bourne Taylor, actor, producer, director. I'm sure we'll start seeing her a lot of stuff. We can have her plug it later. But thank you so much, Catherine, for joining me on Nunez Nunchi. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for inviting me. I'm just so excited. Really? Oh, yeah. And so just sharing with the audience how you first caught my eyes when we were talking about what we're going to discuss, Hometown Cha-Cha-Cha, um, which I have already said is my favorite K-drama to date. And we'll talk more about what that looks like for you. But that's how we bonded over the love of that. And it's grown from there. So that's that. <laughs> yeah, you and I, you and yeah. I were in the uh, in oh. the group chat and we were like, why don't we just take this to another channel? Because yeah. we're like we, spamming we everybody it. right we're, now. We're still in the group chat, but we were like, excuse us while we talk about it somewhere else. We're going to go <laughs> and, to a room and of our own. All the plots, which we'll try to do our best with, with spoilers, but you know, we'll try to do our best, but sometimes it happens because we're sharing about it. But that said, mm -hmm. I have to know your history though. Like, how did you get into K-dramas? Oh my goodness. So a few years ago, I had just moved to Chicago. I live in Los Angeles now, but I used to live in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I was on Tumblr, actually, mm -hmm. looking up Star Wars gifts. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I was really into the new, the new <laughs> sequel. And um, everyone was posting gifts of Goblin. And I just kept seeing, and I think it was when Goblin was first airing, and I kept seeing these beautiful shots of like a girl on a dock with a red scarf glowing. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone, if you've seen Goblin, everyone knows what I'm talking yeah, about. I mean, yeah. Oh my gosh. And like them facing each other, her holding the flowers. I kept seeing these and they were just so striking and beautiful. Um, and I was really taken aback by how beautiful the cinematography was. So I found it online, probably not a great version of it, very wow. like uh, splotchy, yeah. but uh, I watched all of it and I had never experienced a K-drama before. So, you know, when, uh, when we had the bromance, when we had um, like the, the forbidden love trope, I was like, this is, I've never seen anything like this and I don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> Did you binge it, obviously? Or, or like I binged it. Mm -hmm. I think I watched all of it in three days. And uh, oh, wow. I believe when I started it, it had just ended. Um, yeah, I loved it wow. so much. So you and you saw it before I did, because I think I saw it a couple of years later. Yeah. So that no, was 2016. I, okay. It was 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was 2016. And um, it brought me a lot of joy. Like, it was a very tumultuous time and I was dealing a lot with feelings of like worth mm -hmm. and it really provided an escape that I needed at yeah. the time yeah. and so after that I just started researching k-drama world <laughs> and I kind of made my way oh, through okay. what everyone kind of told me is like the top 10 mm -hmm. since then I've watched about 50 k-dramas wow. yeah so they definitely got me through the pandemic yeah. And yeah, I mean, they just provide like a source of joy and um, security for me. So I'm very oh, thankful security. to them. I love that word. How, yeah. does that, how does the security, to explain a little bit more about that. So something that I love about K-drama is the way it deals in tropes and setting expectations and then fulfilling those expectations. Mm -hmm. And we were also talking about this beforehand. There are almost set roles, you know, there's like, the main lead and the female lead. And you know that like eventually they're going to end up together. And then you've got the second lead <laughs> right. and there's the antagonist, like the bad guy, no questions asked. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, life can feel very tumultuous and like you don't have a lot of control a lot of the time. And I actually really love that K-dramas through how they deal in tropes and setting expectations you feel secure in a way. That's so well said. I love that. Cause I, you know, we make yeah. fun of the tropes, but I think you're right. You hit the nail on the head. A lot of us still like them though. We like them though. What to expect. Yeah. And then sometimes when K-dramas break the expectation uh -huh. or break the trope, that's even more thrilling. Cause it's like, no, <laughs> oh, you're, you're like, doing? what just happened? They you're kissed the in episode four. Ever. I know. Or like, <laughs> wait, the bad guy has a heart. He's yeah. in love with her. Like, 
<laughs> oh yeah, no, he's not he's he's tormented. He's not bad. Which oh, is no K dramas. They're not fully bad. No, they're not no. fully bad unless they're like you know a demon from the past that's yeah, like yeah, a ghost coming. To I love take that. No, something. I love. I think you're the first person that used the word security because you. It sounds like you just know what you're gonna get. I mean, in a different way. Obviously, you don't know the story, but yeah, so it's it's it, yeah. it's not a question. Sorry, real quick. Oh, it's no, not no, a question no, no. of. It's not a question of if you're going to get it. It's how you're going to get it. So uh -huh. I love that, and that's why I feel like, especially drawn to romantic comedies. It's not a question of if they're going to end up together. It's just how we're going to get there. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. So well said. That's the sound bite. Um, so then I was going to say, uh, you've seen, so you're more of a romantic comedy person. Is that the sound I bite? am more of a romantic comedy, but I gotta say for a long time, I didn't love historicals. I kept getting confused about all the court intrigue. I know some people love historicals, yeah. but lately I'm really getting into historicals. Like which one? I'm really loving Lovers of the Red Sky. Someone, I think maybe it was you that said you need to watch this. Maybe I need to watch it. Yeah, I mean, I was not, really not surprised. It. I okay. was surprised by how much I'm loving it. Um, I I will say, usually the shows I watch need for me they need to have a romance angle. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Which is surprising that I've watched them without it, but that's because there's there's they're progressing in a different way. So I just was curious. But you're right, the mm -hmm. romance angle is really nice. That's what I mean. It makes me feel good. I'm not going to apologize for that. It makes me feel yeah. really good. <laughs> no, I think that's awesome. Yeah, it makes you feel good. So you, I introduced you as an actor, producer, director. So let's talk about how your work plays into watching K dramas. Like, how has it enhanced your work or helped you um, in your, you know, in your career? I have. Um, well, for one thing, I made a short film that's on the festival circuit right now that is all about fandom and how we actually in, in the short film she's a fan fiction writer and it's all about how these uh forms of escape can actually be a really beautiful thing um but the world sort of wants you to feel ashamed about it so i i use my fangirlness in my characters and in the stories i write often um but actually so one thing that's really interesting to me from an actor perspective is we have a very specific kind of training in Western culture. It's based in mm -hmm. Stanislavski and in like naturalism hmm. and K-dramas. I was really surprised when I started watching them, how the realities and the reactions can be bigger. It's very uh, heightened compared to what I, we're used to watching in Western culture and compared to what our training is as actors here. But it's still rooted in truth. And mm. you can be, there are so many great actors in K-dramas that like understand the genre are like, they understand the assignment and <laughs> they got, and they maybe, got it right. They did their homework. <gasps> right. They know what kind of thing they're in. And maybe the reactions are bigger than you would normally see on like American TV, but the kernel of truth and it being rooted in a true emotion is still there. And so that really opened my eyes as an actor to just a reminder that like, we don't, there's no one way to act well. Hmm, interesting. I love, I'm like fascinated. This is such a unique angle. I think you're the first actress I've talked to, producer um, and director. And I think that's super cool. So you're, okay. So, you know, it's funny. You're talking about expression or even acting. What I think is ironic, like always point out is that we get so much emotion from these actors, but then yet generally speaking, Asian culture, Korean culture is expressionless more so than so Western, Westerners, which, which is fascinating. Can you explain that? Cause I'm trying to rack my brain about that. I was gonna ask you the same thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. I'm like, they do so good at when the men cry, which is another oh trope, you see it happen. You just cry. But I'm like, you don't necessarily see that in Western. Uh, I mean, you, of course it happens, but it's such a part of the trope where the Korean men, guys can cry, you know? They cry and, and, they, and they cry, cry. I mean, I they know cry. they go for it. They're wailing. And I think that's awesome. Like men across the board need to, yes. they could all do with a good cry, man. Yeah, but I'll be <laughs> honest, that's not necessarily, you know, uh, replicating uh, Korean culture. I mean, so, I'm just trying to figure that out. maybe they're getting it out on screen. Possibly. I mean, I'm spitballing here, but we, we go to these stories for an escape and 
you know, I think when you watch K-dramas, you understand that they don't represent real world, but they represent maybe a world that you wish you lived in or a world that's interesting to you. Yeah. And I mean, speaking for myself, that's what I get out of it is yeah. people who are allowed. That, that's what I love in stories in general. It's people who are allowed to live out and experience things that I wish I could live out and experience and live in a way that I wish I could express myself. So maybe there's something to I, that. that. That really makes sense. And because with the writing is obviously also beautiful too. You have these screenwriters that write these dramas. So that must be part of it. They, this is a society they wish to see or want to experience like Kong Jin mm-hmm. in hometown cha-cha-cha which obviously <gasps> fits right into your genre now I know why you also like because it it's all oh my gosh <laughs> but but before we get to that because that's like the the icing on the cake what to uh, other dramas that you've watched um what has been your favorite Ooh, oh oh my gosh I well know. okay I've got I've, I've made a whole spreadsheet oh <laughs> You can access through my Instagram, which is all like I've ranked all the K dramas that I've watched. No way! I did I this. Have to check that out. Okay. Well, I I did this before I realized that I think it's my drama list literally does that for you. <laughs> they do. But no, it's too late. Like but I already have my spreadsheet. Matter. You have your own touch to it. Yeah. I think my favorites are Goblin. I also loved. <laughs> What's wrong with Secretary Kim? <laughs> Yeah, that was a good I love one. what's wrong with Secretary Kim. That is like the I, so mm-hmm. good. I also loved Just Between Lovers. I love that too. You know, you're so naming beautiful. all the ones I love. Oh, I, that was yeah. an underrated one in the sense of oh my I just happened to find it and I was like, what's this? And then I was like, what is this? It's so Same good. with me. I think Hulu has it. And I was just kind yeah. of seeing what Hulu had. Um, yeah. And, and, and oh Vicky has it. Obviously, I subscribe to Vicky, but. The, the guy, no, the guy was appealing to me. I already knew the girl, but I hadn't really known um, 2 p.m. too much and he had mm-hmm. been part of that. So I fell in love with him. I loved that show. And it was also beautifully shot with all those yes. sunsets. Yes. And the seaside. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that, that, and then now, and then let's, okay. So now let's go to hometown. Okay. We'll do our best here. So, Tell me your experience watching Hometown. I know I, we've shared about it, but I love the audience or the viewers to hear. So I was really looking forward to this show. And um, I mean, even the like trailers and the visuals that they put out for it. Yeah. Like, so it, it just looked great. Mm-hmm. And I think that the first eight episodes, no, probably the first 11 episodes really deliver on that like rom-com promise. Yeah. And then I was so pleasantly surprised by how it wrapped up in a way that really dived deeper and didn't take just easy answers or easy solutions for why people are the way they are. It really went into it um, in terms of like character development and justifying how people got to these places. And so I was really like taken aback by the attention to detail it character development wise so I was very I had like a ton of fun watching it from beginning to end yeah and then also cried a lot because they really they really went in on character development I don't know they They really touched you like oh so cute yeah (laughs) I was just very impressed from beginning to end um and we've talked about this obviously there's you know there's been some shakeups since it ended I can also own that watching this, I just felt a lot of joy and it was a real comfort for me while it was airing. Um, And I'm grateful for the show. Yeah, I, I, well, people know how I feel about it. Obviously where I was also a fan going in by both the actors that Mm -hmm. also appeals to me. I'm like, oh, I love Shimina. I love this guy. Oh, I can't wait. But you're, you know what I loved? Well, tell me what you thought of the cinematography as well. And I wanted to go there like tomorrow, today. Oh my gosh, I'm, I can't. I mean, I'm not surprised that that town is overrun by tourists. Yeah, now. I, I so beautiful. I'm <laughs> I wouldn't go to homes. I'd be a little bit more, you know, but boundaries there. But I definitely want to go to the seaside and the lighthouse. Absolutely. And- mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, what was it? I saw someone posted on Twitter that every single episode ended with a far out shot yeah. of the town, like a different part of the town. Oh, and yeah. yeah, there were just a lot of like really beautiful what what do they call it it's like the, the 
the visual language. They had a very clear visual language mm -hmm. um, for this show. And I mean, the shots were beautiful. I One of the shots for, that caught my eye from the trailer was that shot of um, Dusik from above when he's on his surfboard in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. and, and he's lying down. Yeah, he's lying down. It must have been a drone shot because it's so high up and it's so beautiful and striking. And also now that we understand the like mental reality that Dusik is living in, yeah. it, it, it it's really, I mean, it's even more striking and beautiful. It's like this man in the middle of an ocean just yeah. sort of laying there. And it seems like he's almost waiting for something. Mm. and just kind of existing in the ocean. I just remember that. Wasn't that, that's in the very beginning, right? Yeah, it's the yeah. first episode. It's right before yeah. he sees, um, he sees her. Hygiena. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> also, so, also, if I, if I uh, butcher any of these pronunciations, feel free to correct me. No worries. No worries. Um, I mean, I usually say the actor's names um, and sometimes I don't even know their names. Like I forget their names, you know, because right. you know the main actress because they say their names a lot, but you forget sometimes the side characters. So then and I'll be like the girl, the little girl, the girl, you know, the little, so speaking of which let's, we'll, we'll get to the romance between the main leads, but I want to hear about like, who are your other favorite characters? Cause I love oh. side characters, right? The side characters in this show. That's the thing. They really fleshed out the entire world by giving us little capsule moments yes. to, so that we not only understood the main couple, but the side characters as well. And it really just made the world so much bigger and more vibrant. Um, okay, my favorite character, the girl, <laughs> the little girl. The oh little yeah, girl. which, you know what? I wanted to see more of her actually. Oh wait, which little girl? The, oh, well, I loved Bora, but I was talking about the teenage girl who yeah. loves the, um, the pop DOS. group. DOS. And there is a video of her meeting IU. That yes, I, think I saw that viral. one. That's how I recognized oh, my God. her. Yeah, I was like, oh, she was okay. so familiar. Where is this girl from? Yeah. Oh, she's a good actress. <laughs> she's a great actress. And I really she cried where she cried and, and how she met IU. And the first thing she asked her was, will you watch my acting? Like, can yeah, I act I in loved front it. of you? I know. She's so clearly cool. Good, you know, oh, I love IU too, but yeah. um, so, yeah, I loved so I loved her too. So that's why you, I was assuming you were talking about. Yeah. But toward the latter half, you didn't see her as much. I noticed she was that really she wasn't in, in the beginning. one of the episodes yeah. at the end. Maybe. I noticed that too. Yeah, but maybe that's how the story unfolded in that sense, you know, but, um, but yeah, yeah. I would love to see her. So that's interesting. And I was trying to think who my side favorite character is, but I, I really believe this, these side, well, especially when we're talking about Kong Jin, the community, they make the community. So they had to have, we needed to see them. I, I loved seeing yeah. just all the love and oh. I don't know, it was just, it was like funny and the grandmas and the grandmas oh grandmas. my gosh um this is a, oh my gosh this is a, can we say spoilers we're, we're avoiding spoilers right uh, we're trying to avoid spoilers but you know what I, you know at this point it, if it relates to what you want to share let's do it just the friendship between the three grandmas and how that plays out in towards the end of the series um I there was a moment and you if you watch it you probably know what I'm talking about but I'll be vague um where I just thought, I hope that when I'm old, I'm just having sleepovers with my best friends. Yeah, yeah. Like what no, a beautiful it, thing. Did you, okay, this might be kind of a spoiler, but did you see what was going to come? Because I felt like the way they were talking, something was going to happen. But I, you know, I'll be honest, people, I know people were sad. I was just, I wasn't sad. Yeah. I was touched by the way everything was handled and it made sense to me. It made sense to me. And I also knew that from a character per, a character perspective we needed something for Dusik to mourn in a healthy way yes oh my gosh that's so deep right yeah uh, <laughs> because he was mourning in an unhealthy way and I think that's fine to say throughout the whole show yeah until yeah and we needed him to experience loss as like this new person for us to know as viewers that he was going to be okay and that doesn't mean life is perfect now like loss right. still happens yeah but but now he has the tools and like the support yeah. to actually deal with and that. And the girl, and that's not a spoiler. I mean, hello, if you know the tropes, the male lead, <laughs> that's why we were so upset. Did you see Startup? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Ruined my life. Yeah. Sorry. I brought it up. Yeah. I know mentally I was <laughs> like, you okay. bring that up. <laughs> um, I I'm depressed. Yeah, no. So the fact that that didn't, that, but that made sense. It didn't, the trope was that the main girl was going to go with the main guy. So I guess we could have, we should have known that, but we I was should have known, but I wouldn't have known if I hadn't seen the poster and know that like the the main guy in startup is a ma major star there's no way he's not going to get with the girl i know but i but still hope i was like i still hope maybe they'll okay. change things and realize Me this too. guy is exceeding the expectations you might as well give him the girl but that's i really held on to hope knowing that it, i wasn't going to get what i wanted but i just thought like maybe this will be the show that really changes everything and yeah. they're going to switch it up and maybe maybe didn't happen, didn't happen no nope. So yes, here he got the girl. And I don't think that's a spoiler because that don't no. trust me. Every, the whole world would have gone crazy if that didn't happen. That would have made no people. sense. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that you brought that up. Thanks for sharing that. I'm just going to reiterate the grief that maybe wasn't as healthy or productive earlier on in his story. But then later on, we see him healthy, grief more healthy and productive in a way that's super important. That's awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. and it means that like the sad things that happen at the end of the series, they weren't just for, um, I don't know, they weren't just for shock effect yeah. or to fill a story that should have ended at episode 12, which we do see a lot in K-dramas. Yes, we do. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it feels like the last four episodes are just like things that didn't have to happen and or rushed in, let's wrap it yeah. up quickly yeah and or like, rushed oh what just happened exactly and and I mean the writing in this series was so strong in that they really filled every episode with things that had to happen so that it I thought it tied up perfectly by the end of episode 16 oh, like we yeah. understood yeah. why everyone was the way they were we saw them existing in their new life in a way that is better than it was before it was it it was just a very well-written show. So well, I know. And that someday I would love to just get to know with some of the writers, not much information out there. I mean, you're a producer. I'm assuming sometimes you want to know more about these writers because they're, they're the ones creating the scripts and absolutely the that come out of the, yes, the actors act them out. And I heard of ad libs. Do you watch behind the scenes? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> They have I'm good like, ad libs. The latest behind the scenes. And I love watching that just to see the re reality of what it looks like, you know, yeah. and actors, and actors can ad lib and they can, you know, they can, uh, obviously they're deeply important to the process. It doesn't happen if there's not an actor saying the right. line. Um, but I mean, writing, I think is so much more than just one liners or yeah. dialogue. It's about story structure and yeah. beats. And that's something that like an actor is not in charge of. If you're looking at a 16 episode, um series and I really thought that the writers did a, like an extraordinary job of pacing and landing those beats and landing those narrative shifts they just did a great job I, th I think so too and then you and I have talked about it that uh I think there was a, a specific episode that was the heaviest one and it mm -hmm. was heavy but it made sense for it to be heavy because we it made sense it. yeah and because it's gonna be a happy ending yeah. so we have to have the darkest night Right, like right before the dawn, right before exactly. the happy ending. Right, because and, and I think everybody knows that we all know it would be. This is a rom com, and that's how they label it. That's one thing Koreans do well. They're like, "This is a rom com. It's a healing drama." Exactly. In every interview, they would say that. I was like, "Okay," and it and it and it was, you know. Yes. Um, but I love the depth that this, just like what's wrong with Secretary Kim. Uh, hopefully, it's not a spoiler, but there was a lot of like trauma in there as well that was a big part of the storyline of the characters and that's people, so true people didn't tend to see that they were more like oh look at you know Puck Sojin. I was like that too but then that's <laughs> agreed true. I know but Same. their childhood connection was important yes I was going to ask you what you think of all the connections that oh who just walked in my husband but he's oh, okay. being quiet my husband <laughs> <laughs> is he does he want to join in no, he's just being so awkward. It's so what funny. Does he, he's do, like, does he watch any of the K-dramas with you? Oh, that's a great question. Hey, DJ, mm -hmm. um, you don't watch K-dramas with me, but he has started recognizing the actors from coming in and out of the rooms. And so he'll be like, wait a second. 
she played that poor girl in that other one you were watching. Was she a poor high school student? <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I know Great he job, starts he recognizing did. them. <laughs> that is hilarious. Hilarious. But maybe someday he'll go to watching them with you because they're fun to watch, you know? We are watching Squid Game together. We're oh, watching okay. Squid yeah. Game. That's probably more his style. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I watched Squid Game and I had to watch, I thank goodness for Hometown Cha Cha in between. I was like, that was disturbing. Let me watch episode six of Hometown Cha Cha Cha. Oh my gosh. Better. I wish I'd no. been doing that because I, it, I really have a hard time falling asleep uh, watching Squid Game so then if I don't. Re- watch re episodes because that, I couldn't, I was like, what the heck? I, you know, it's not something I would watch for my mental health, but I watched for entertainment purposes and Absolutely. how good it was. It, it was yeah. it's good, you know? And, and I did even cry in, in Squid Game, just saying. Oh my gosh, I'm ready for okay. it. I can tell. What, what, okay, what anyway. are you on? Two. We just finished episode two. Oh, you just two. started. Oh, okay. You're just beginning, but there's. I know. Moments. But, anyways, no, I was going to say, um, just about the uh, the romance. Let's talk about the romance of how did you like it played out compared to other rom coms? I think? really loved the romance. I your face. I thought. Like, oh, I would. I mean, I found myself thinking about it like all the time, even when the show wasn't on, <laughs> and, I, and I found myself kind of trying to like figure out what their next steps were going to be. I loved that from episode one, you knew that Dusik was like taken by her. Mm -hmm. And you know how uh, episode one ends seeing her from his perspective and you think I'm just like watching her. I love the epilogue. (laughs) That those like loved the yeah, epilogue yes, love them love yeah them. no by the end of episode one I was like I'm all in I'm yeah. all in on this couple and then um, and then this is a no I don't think it's a spoiler but then the final episode he brings that back how he saw her do you remember yes that oh my god special scene he goes oh I didn't see you like that here's how I saw you exactly you and that? I loved that he saw her as her best version of herself and that's who he was pursuing right right that's who he was pursuing yeah and then he allowed her he allowed her to be like her prickly self (laughs) and still I don't know I really loved that we never felt like there was anything she needed to do to really earn his affection Mm -hmm, mm-hmm mm-hmm it, I don't know, it's such a tightrope because yeah, like they both needed to change as people to be strong together. And he did too. We saw that in the second half, like he is not perfect. No, right. He needed to do some deep, deep healing. Yes. And I loved that by the time we got to that point in the story, she was all in on him. Mm -hmm. And like, it was his healing that needed to happen. And the first half is really like, you know, he's, they're 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 they were playing to know a game, each other but he was more like exactly right yeah. he was the one who kept saying like stop creating like fake boundaries like just let me what do you say bro your eraser once in a while and cheat off oh, your homework yeah like, I mean he would say some cool stuff the writer that would put in there like very yeah. metaphorical things and 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 then you know just try to get a rise out of her do you know totally. what I mean? but also still totally. know that she's like that and be like oh oh you know the scene where uh, the second lead, of course, who I also loved. Oh my gosh. I was going to say, that was one of my favorite characters. Loved him. Loved him and even loved um, the bromance. So good. And I loved, oh my gosh. I mean, okay, this is a little spoiler. I loved how the second that a, uh, the opportunity for like a love triangle and contention between the two male leads reared its head the second he was like I don't do that yeah I love that he's like no, I'm not playing that's that not my, you know and he, and then he was like flat out about it but he was just direct but yeah so was, which so is another too, example you know? another example of the k-drama doing a great job of saying like this is what to expect yeah we're telling you is. straight up not to expect some like bro competition situation like like startup <laughs> like startup. that had us dragging that love triangle, right? Or, or oh my gosh. And then when you thought it was done, it like came back again. Yeah, no. So this was very good. clear, like, well, I forget when, but I really, really liked that scene 
when the second lead and Hedgen and Tushik were all at his house. He had a great house, by the way. I thought it was so fitting with all the books. Amazing house. Anyway, um, that he, um, the, the second lead saw Hedgen so differently. Like, oh, you're so, oh, that's so, you're so good hearted to come into the clinic, to make a clinic at Kongjin and just do that. And, and, and Tushik was like, what do you mean? Like what? You know, yes. I love that moment. He's like, no, I know her. She has goals. She's ambitious. She's, it was about money or, you know what I mean? But he still accepted that and was. Yeah. He it. provided a really important piece of her backstory yes. that Dusik needed to know. And that we also needed to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, what do you think of the childhood connection? Don't, don't cage. That's another trope. Cage the childhood like, connection, the childhood connection or some connection from their background that you're like, what? I remember, I think it's, it, it's right. It's the episode when the second male lead is introduced and they end the episode with reminding us that, oh, they also met his teens. Oh yes. Dusik yes. I love that. And Hyjin also met his teens. And even though I know, how, again, I know how this is going to go. Like I know she's going to end up with the male lead. I'm not worried about the second male lead, but it did make me, again, feel super taken care of as an audience member that I just got this little reminder, like, no, 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 they're faded. Like, it's yeah, okay. They met not they knew each other twice. Childhood. Yeah. Teen, that's a spoiler, maybe. But, and then the third right. time, which I will not mention as a spoiler, was a different oh, angle, yes. right? Totally. I just remembered that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that was another, yeah. uh, so this, okay. So I don't know, but not, it's not in every K drama now it's in the newer ones. Cause startup had it. The epilogues are kind of cool. They don't do that in all the K dramas. Crash mm -hmm. landing on you had that as well. Yeah. Crash landing startup, maybe the Netflix K dramas. They, they do it, I love those epilogues. You're like, what just happened? I love the epilogue. What? Oh, and it totally, it totally hooks you in for the next episode. It does. You're like, what, how are we going to see that play out? I know, or it just revisits something that we already saw in the plot, just from a different character's perspective, yes. oh, which gosh. that's what hooks me. And, and they totally know like what gets us. It's so <laughs> like, you could say it's like smartly made or they just like understand what their consumers want yeah, either you, way. Well, do you want to give an example of one of the epilogues where, which I don't, hopefully won't spoil it, that you're like, oh my gosh, this is like so classic to see this angle. I mean, the one that I said, the end of the first episode, oh, yeah. it was just funny. like the end of the first episode for Crash Landing on You, yes. where we see um, him looking at her in the tree. And cracking <laughs> up and going like, she's cute. You she's know? so cute. I love yeah. her. It, yeah. I, it's same thing. I'm such a sucker for that. Like, yeah. yes, yeah. give me like the guy that you think is being like uh, grumpy. And then you see that actually he was being very soft the whole time as an yeah, epilogue. I'm oh, in, like, so I will Korean. watch it. Yeah. Is it and really? Of course, of course, he's looking at her in that sunset scene with her hair, look, you know, Shinmina with the squid looking so gorgeous in that scene. Too. I know, which I'm like, tie your hair back. Like, you're working with seafood. And have this gorgeous smile with your dimples. And oh. uh, yeah, the dimple couple. Oh but my gosh, anyways, the dimples. So we can talk about it forever. But any, as we wrap up, I would love to ask your thoughts on just how K-dramas you want to take a second to think about it, have helped you with your own mental health your well-being oh my gosh the joy, I mean, for sure the joy yeah a lot of joy also I think me as a person I have always been someone who really gets deeply into the things that I am into um and as a kid I didn't have a lot of control in terms of like me talking about it all the time and kind of like <laughs> co-opting all conversations to be about the thing that I'm obsessed with <laughs> mm -hmm. and then as a teenager I realized that like that's embarrassing and I need to pull back on it and k-dramas have really as an adult for me given me another thing to like love without shame and get excited about and tell people I'm excited about um and so that's something yeah k-dramas have done for me is kind of broken that cycle of embarrassment and shame when you really, really love something. Um, and I'm just so glad to like come back to it as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, broken that cycle of shame. You, you said something very important because people say, oh, my guilty pleasure 
is binging and I, I've, I've like I've actually told people don't say that unless you I mean do you really feel guilty they're like well no but I go why it's a, it's a pleasure you enjoy it exactly and like you deserve to feel good things that's right also I love that a, lo- a lot of the k-dramas I watch are really like written for the female gaze yeah and I think it's changed me as a storyteller rem- like having an example of what that actually looks like and means um because when so much of the content that we take in is from like the male gaze perspective that affects the work that you put out even as a woman and so i actually think it's really important for me to be watching things that are like written for women Mm -hmm. for from like the female gaze perspective it's so it it makes me a better artist um i love that yeah yeah. And you're right. Cause I, that's just a good reminder of, of how it's written from the female gaze. I didn't even, I think I knew that, but didn't think about that, which is probably why, cause I was thinking of other K dramas that appeal to men. Cause you know, men do watch them, but of course, probably, you know, the hometown cha-cha-chas though, my husband did watch it with me and liked it. That's probably more, he wouldn't always watch something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> though he right. always watched Crash Landing. So we're talking so about good. The genre well men can enjoy things written from the female yes, gaze they perspective should, they should they see how should. the men are treating the women i'm just exactly saying. well Why and sure. we watch you know there's good storytelling on both sides mm-hmm. and it doesn't yeah it doesn't mean that like all things written from a male perspective are bad like some of no, my favorite stuff is right, definitely. um it's just it is the majority of what we see you're and right. I like that K-dramas are, um, are breaking that pattern. I love that. I love that. Well, I'm so, I mean, you know, I mean, I had to put an end because we have to end somehow, but I love, yeah. we'll have to talk more offline on Hometown Cha Cha Cha, just how it was <laughs> just lovely, well done. And I, and I highly recommend you rewatch some episodes to help you through Squid Game. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Squid Game That's is like... Better. Yeah, creeping into my dreams and I need to take it easy because it's it really intense. It's graphically, you know, jarring, but entertaining just as well. But also thank good. you so much, Catherine Bourne Taylor. By the thank way, you. whenever I say born, I'm like born identity, born. I know. Get that? Well, I wish I wish Jason would call sometimes. Yeah. You know, he's always on the run. <laughs> or are you Emma Stone's doppelganger, which I, you know, I'm sure you get. Yeah. Like you could I'd love me. to play her sister. She can call me. I mean, that would be awesome. But thank you so much. And I can't wait. You want to share that work that you said that you were super proud of that's on YouTube? Yeah. Um, a short film that I star and produce and just hit a hundred thousand views on YouTube. It's called Cool for Five Seconds. And it is on the Amaletto channel on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and you type in cool for five seconds, it'll be right there. It's 12 minutes. And um, I think it's a really easy. People better watch that. Yeah. Yeah. You can watch 12 minutes. I know you're watching 90 minute K-dramas. Yeah. You're you're being sleep deprived watching those K-dramas. So you can do 12 minutes. Yeah, there we go. But watch it. Watch it after you watch Squid Game. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Good idea. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you again soon. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Thanks. You can listen in on platforms such as Spotify, Pandora, Google, and Apple, but also watch the podcast on our Nunazuchi YouTube channel every Monday where it launches at 6 p.m. Eastern.